Hey friends, it's Risket, and welcome back to another episode of the A Modular Video Library, the series that takes a look at the wide range of modules available for the A Modular system. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the SV or state variable filter. We'll be giving a general overview before diving into some demo patches. Before we begin, A Modular is a small but ever-growing system. So if you find this video useful, be sure to give the video a like and subscribe if you haven't already, or consider supporting me on Patreon. The videos for this series can be found in a playlist on my channel and can be viewed in any order. Green thumbnails are used for official tangible waves modules and pink thumbnails are used to cover third-party modules. With all of that said, let's have a look at the SV filter. Now, currently at the time of filming this, I've just recently filmed the WASP filter overview. I didn't mention the SV filter much in that video, but if you want a direct comparison between how these filters sound, you can go and check out the WASP filter version. The key difference that I've noticed is that the WASP filter has a particular sort of character to it, very high squelchy resonance like you might find in that Roland TD303 bass, but the SV filter is still more than useful. So we've got these first two inputs, which is in high and in low. If we plug anything in, in high, it's going to sound the same as if we plug it into in L. The key difference is that in L adds a fair amount of drive. So you will get like a slightly saturated and louder signal. We've also got two CV inputs, and those are used for controlling the filter cutoff. It doesn't control the filter resonance, but you can use those two CV inputs to control things like maybe patching an LFO to one and an envelope to the other for some really cool creative results. We've also got bus CV and bus control. And then in terms of outputs, we've got three outputs for low pass, three outputs for band pass, and two outputs for high pass. So I'm just going to hook up my mixer here to the audio output. And now let's just patch something fairly basic. Um, we'll probably use a square wave from the 555 over here. I'll patch it into in H for now. And then let's take the low pass of RSV filter and patch it into the mixer. So I've got this turned up about halfway right now. And if we were to take this same signal and plug it into in L, there's that drive I'm talking about. It's a little bit louder. High, low. Great, I'm just gonna leave the resonance up halfway, turn our CV control all the way down and bring this in again. Great. So you might notice straight away, if I turn the CV knob, it actually opens up our filter just a little bit, almost with finer increments. And if I turn the resonance up too high, we can get some really ringing resonant tones. Let's have a listen to Bandpass now. Pretty standard stuff and high pass. Great, so what I'm gonna do now is let's just make this sound a little bit more interesting and we'll use the module and we'll patch back into the low pass. So what I want to quickly demonstrate here are the two CV inputs because they are particularly useful. 
Now, I like to have a little bit more control over how some of these things work. Um, so what I might do is I'll just take a basic triangle wave and we'll attenuate that signal. Yes, this does have an attenuator built in, but because we're gonna use both of these CV inputs, uh, this just gives me a little bit more control over how the LFO is going to interact with the filter. Take the output of that and we'll plug it into CV1. So if we turn this up now, make it quite deep. We could turn this up even further. Bring it out slowly. So that's pretty great. And then what I want to do is use an envelope as well. So we'll just take an envelope out and let's control the filter with that. And maybe we'll just take the end out of the envelope and trigger it that way, just so I don't have to trigger it with anything else. Can open this up a little further. There we go. So let's bring this down a little further. a little bit um, faster. So I've just swapped these around now so that it's a little bit easier to hear our envelope. Now let's put the LFO in here and slowly introduce it. There we go. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty nice. It's almost like a sort of vibrato effect that we're getting. So yeah, I mean, aside from that, there's not really too much else that I can talk about in relation to the SV filter. And that little demo probably went on long enough. Like personally, I enjoy the sound of the Wasp filter more. And in the future, I would probably take the SV filter out and just swap it for another Wasp filter. That said, the SV filter still does have its use cases. Um, like I'm using the module with it right now and I definitely find that it has a nice sort of softer sound to it. Whereas the Wasp filter can be sort of quite harsh and over the top with its filtering. So yeah, for things like nice lush pad sounds and whatnot, I definitely reach for the SV filter over that. It's just, uh, I guess I enjoy making like a lot of sort of abrasive and uh, kind of techno-y music. So I just prefer the Wasp filter myself. Anyways, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it goes without saying, it's still extremely useful to have it in your rack. And uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoy the demo patches that are about to play for you right now. So hit the like if you like, and if you don't, tell me why. Please subscribe, check me out on Patreon, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.